This is the Wealth Ability for CPAs show. Better clients, better practice, better life. Here's Tom Wheelwright. Welcome to the Wealth Ability show for CPAs, where we're always discovering how to build better clients, a better practice, and a better life. This is Tom Wheelwright, founder and CEO of the Wealth Ability Network. So, in an increasingly crowded marketplace of CPAs, that is, in, it's increasingly more difficult to distinguish yourself from any other CPA. And it mm -hmm. seems like these days, the only way people are distinguishing themselves is to get bigger than others. And bigger is not always better. So, how as a as a smaller CPA firm, you want to remain independent. You want to be one with one of the big known, what I call no name brands, mm. um, big, big CPA firms. How do you distinguish yourself? How do you tell that story that actually brings you not just the quote unquote best clients, but actually the best clients for you, because the best clients for you are going to be different than the best clients for somebody else. And today we have an expert in this area, actually a, um, a, a new good friend of mine, Justin Bream. And uh, Justin is an expert on storytelling and telling your brand story. So Justin, if you would just give us a little of your background and how you got into the whole storytelling business. Sure. Well, one, it's great to be here. Uh, you're a true visionary. Uh, I would describe myself as an integrating visionary. Um, so most of my day is talking to the world's top ideators. They're all over the place. And I hear blah, 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 blah. And then simplify that into a 500 word story and then immediate connection to other visionaries. Um, and then was a journalist for 20 years, created an entire business model based on how PR firms annoyed me for 20 years. So I, I don't know what PR firms do other than annoyed me as a journalist. So creative solution, problem solve, successful global company. And we partner with visionaries changing the world, which is a lot of fun. Awesome. I love that. Thanks. Thanks. So we're, we're going to do some actual work today. Um, we're going to do this uh, in, in real time here. Um, because I'm, I love being the student and I'm, uh, I'm about as transparent as they come. So I'm totally, <laughs> totally, totally Ditto. open, totally open to this. So, um, so first of all, let's talk about this whole idea of creating a story and why, you know, why would you create a story? What's this whole idea? I, we call it a brand story. You know, we call it a, you know, why has that become such a big deal? You know, we heard, um, you know, we've had so many books written about it. So many people talking about it. Why is this kind of the in thing right now, Justin? Well, it's an interesting thing. So I was a journalist for 20 years. So you don't you don't get into that for employee account, revenue, office space. Like that's just business owner stuff to me. And all I care about is spending time with my family, wife, uh, wife and two children or two boys. And then growing network on a global level with visionaries. I found all this other stuff, other stuff takes care of itself. And so there's two questions that people at that I know they're a business owner, not a visionary, uh, when they ask me these two questions. One is what do you do? And two, can I pick your brain? Those are those are transactional business owner questions. And the reason why is because nobody cares about what you do. They care about who you are. So as a journalist, as a journalist, you receive these useless press releases hundreds of times a day from people you don't know, which is a problem. And these press releases talk about what somebody does and nobody cares. But if someone does care about who you are, if they care about your story, they will care about what you do. And that's the, that's the trick. That's the. Got solution. it. So caring um, about it, it, it's not, that it, it's not that what you do isn't important. It's that it comes second to it's a, it's who you a, are. That's a hundred percent. And so I'm a hundred percent simplifier. Uh, um, so again, most of my day is talking to world's top visionaries and their idea, 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 shiny object, shiny object, shiny object. And then I simplify, 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 simplify. So media only needs two things for a good story. Only two. Uh, my brain simplifies everything into patterns. So only two things. One is a good story, which everyone has. They don't they don't know how to do that, but uh, they're not a trained storyteller. But uh, so a good story is what you've overcome in life, what inspires you, why you're doing this, who your family is, who your parents were. And then two is a news peg. A news peg is why is it a story now? That's the what you do part. And a news peg is two to three, maybe four lines in the story that's blended into the story that's actually about the person. 
Interesting. So, all right. So let's, uh, let's take an example. So, you know, a little bit about me. Um, so how would you go about if you were, if, if I was to say, okay, Justin, help me, uh, you know, develop my story, tell my story, uh, Tom Wheelwright, you know, Salt Lake city boy, Mormon missionary, Mormon, uh, yeah, Mormon, you know, um, a, uh, uh, speech impediment. Um, right. So, so, right. so, what what all would go into that story? So you already t- you just answered your own your own answered your own question. So what happens? Um, what happens? Whether in something like this is recorded or not, um, I would rather listen than talk. Most people would rather talk, which is most visionaries would rather talk, which is fine. As a, a journalist, I'd rather listen. And what I found is by listening, people will say what their story is, um, what their story is. And so, again, all I do is talk to entrepreneurs, not business owners, not humans, not consultants, entrepreneurs. And so entrepreneurs, to simplify, the most damaged people, most damaged people with best coping skills. So most trauma, uh, most uh, anxiety, most depression, most potential bankruptcy or potential bankruptcy, but they have the highest coping skills. So they have highest IQ, highest EQ, biggest hustle, biggest drive. And so the only questions I always ask someone always, um, are, are who your parents or where did you come from? Where's your, you know, you know, your grandparents, whatever that was, you've already answered that in some capacity. Well, well, but let me, let me, let me, let me ask you this question. So, yeah. you know, there's there are a lot of stories we read about rags to riches, you know, you read about somebody who came, you know, from a, a, a terrible place and they made it, or, you know, they had disabilities and they made it and people go, wow, that is, that, that's so inspiring. Um, what do you do with somebody like me who came from a very middle-class uh, background, very middle-class neighborhood, never, never worried about food on the table, never worried about my dad having a job because he owned his business. He, he was an entrepreneur. And, uh, how, how do you get that emotion? Because presumably that's what you're after in a story is an, is an emotion in that story. How do you get that out of somebody with a, such a plain vanilla background? I mean, <clears throat> you had a speech impediment. So how you overcame how you overcame that. So, um, so you're looking for what, what, what did you overcome? Well, again, entrepreneurs, most, um, you know, almost without, I have not met one entrepreneur at the highest level that has not overcome at least one of the following four things. Most are two or three. The really successful ones are usually three and four. So four things are bankruptcy or potential bankruptcy, two depression, three, the highest level of anxiety that you can imagine and four likely and are possible traumatic experiences as a child or young adult. So humans, business owners, consultants, those are excuses. Entrepreneur at the highest level, figure it out. So I'm guessing speech impediment throughout school. I don't know when uh, when or how you figured that out and how long it took, but I'm guessing that led to you know potentially three of those four things, uh, if not two of them. And then on Strength Finders, Gallup Clifton Strength Finders, uh, there's 34 of them. I'm dead last in empathy, dead last. However, for people like you, I have endless empathy, endless wanting to understand. Interesting. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, because because um, most people with uh, speech impediment wouldn't be running massive company that helps CPAs around the United States, if not world. They wouldn't be, they wouldn't be doing that. Jim Quick, he's done many interviews. Was told he was stupid multiple multiple times by teachers growing up. I mean, he's <laughs> smartest brain. <laughs> so I have one PR partner. He was, uh, his grandfather was decapitated in front of him uh, oh, in Burma. Yeah. Not Well, that's entrepreneur life. Most people can't, you know, they can't do that. So uh, they, when uh, he was in Burma, not Myanmar, and then he went to Hong Kong, uh, Hong Kong with uh, $10 in his pocket, him and his dad, when he was a kid, they created two eight figure businesses and then the third one that I hired the, the PR firm for, um, I hired the PR firm. Uh, he created an at-home robot to take care of folks with like Alzheimer's dementia because his mom has Alzheimer's dementia. So that's, I mean, that's entrepreneur life. So I'm guessing your IQ is very high. Your EQ is definitely high. And then I'm always fascinated talking to uh, LDS, LDS Mormons. Because a Mormon mission is essentially an entrepreneurial journey. I mean, it you is. knock on five thousand doors to find five new Mormons. So I always like to talk to Mormons. Um, no, I, I I tell people that I spent two years in France learning how to get rejected in French. 
that's entrepreneur life. So that's your story. No, I mean, but, yeah, that's what it is. No, no, it is. But you know, uh, CPAs as, as a group, we're not the most introspective people in the world. Uh, <laughs> robots. <laughs> robots. Well, well, you're an entrepreneur. I, I don't know where robots, CPAs. but you know, there are a lot of entrepreneurial CPAs. I mean, I mean, we have a network of 65 CPA firms. The number one requirement is you're an entrepreneur first and you're right. CPA second. So there are a number of entrepreneurial CPAs. So I right. think that out there and probably people listening to this show are probably the entrepreneurial CPA. Right. So Why would a regular human listen to this? They it, it, exactly. They they never listen to this. The The no. average CPA is not going to listen to No. The, <laughs> or if they were, they're like, oh, God, turn this off. Scarcity, <laughs> scarcity, scarcity. Oh, ah! no. So, Self-introspection. Right. Heavens, let's, no, no, let's, no, no, let's, no. let's turn it off quickly. Um. So how do you how do you work with somebody like that who's not typically you know is typically put up those um, def- what I call defenses right you put up defenses in order to oh. cope that's a coping mechanism right. in order to pull that out of them uh, by listening and then asking the right questions so interviewed thousands upon thousands of people as journalists and then running global PR firm and global connectivity platform that partners only with visionaries you just you know you know what questions to ask and multiple times a week um i mean this is just a skill i guess um or you're born with these skills that people are like oh i've never told anyone that before because i have endless endless empathy and wanting to understand people like you endless and because it's it because most humans would never do what you've done. They don't have the guts or the IQ or the EQ or the courage uh, to be able to do it. And if you're not a litmus test for people you serve, that that's hypocrisy. So the uh, purpose of my life is to be uh, a connecting superhero for every visionary who shares their stories with the world. So I am visionary sharing my story with the world and was just born with a story. I mean, when my one of my... Uh, uh, my dad was 61 when I was born and my mom was 27. So 34 year difference. My dad was a world war II hero shot down multiple times in combat, many times without a parachute. So he'd just get back in the plane. So that's my litmus test. You're either someone who doesn't make an excuse and will get back into a plane after another one was shot down or, or you won't. So we just partner with the ones that would get back in the plane. So he became an attorney in Nuremberg trials, Nazi war crime trials. Um, he died when I was 13 died when I was 13. After he died, I found a, a diary that he had written from the Battle of the Hurricane Forest, very deadly battle towards the end of World War II. Um, every day in that diary gets more and more horrific, uh, just more and more horrific. And uh, I write exactly like he does. Um, boom, 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 just inform and entertain, no fluff, very direct. It's different language, different language. It, 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 it is. You, now, you, sometimes I hear you talk about um, somebody's superpowers. Um, what, what do you mean by that? How, how, when you look at your, you know, somebody's okay. What's somebody's superpowers. I mean, I, so now I, I do have stupid people tricks. I call them, I, I have stupid people tricks, but I don't know if those are superpowers. Um, so, so what do you mean when you say, you know, people have superpowers? Well, that's a good question. A good follow-up. I just feel like you're born to have certain things. Um, like I was just born to be this person. So my mom was 27 when I was born. Um, my dad was hit by a, a drunk driver in his late fifties. The drunk driver was killed instantly. Uh, my dad broke every bone in his body, but survived. And then my mom was his nurse. So that's how they met. She was his nurse. And so most of my days talking to people like you visionaries, I haven't met uh, one person in my life with more hustle than my mom ever. Like I've never met another person with higher survive and thrive than my mom. So I'm, combination of that but like i was born to be connecting superhero for every visionary who shares their stories with the world i've been doing that basically my whole life i mean as a journalist now this and then was just born with a story and a father who could write very well in, in the, the worst battle you can imagine and so i just i just think you're born with certain things and then i've you know simplifying the patterns I think most people are miserable for one of two reasons. One, they never find out what they like to do and what they're good at. So imagine doing something eight to 10 hours a day, every single day that you're not good at or don't like to do that. That would be bad. Um, And then two, which is tragic. You actually find out what you like to do and what you're good at and you don't do anything about it. That I don't Mm -hmm. understand that. 
that makes no sense to me. So I just do what I like to do and what I'm good at. If you want to call that superpower, I, that's fine. I just do what I like to do and what I'm good at. Right. So, so what I'm hearing is that, you know, if I kind of put this in context with a CPA, so CPA looks at, okay, what, what do they love to do? Now, I mean, some CPAs, they love the numbers. Some CPAs love the people. Some CPAs, right. you know, love the, uh, for example, I love the tax law. Um, some people, mm -hmm. you know, some people love different parts of it. And mm -hmm. uh, of course you and you and I share the, the, um, uh, um, we, we, we share working in strategic coach with Dan Sullivan. Right. And uh, he talks about unique, unique ability. Unique and ability. so is, do you kind of equate those two that superpower and unique ability are similar? I would, I would agree with that. Um, and there's a, um, there's a, a quick way of doing that. Um, you know, I'm guessing the entrepreneurial CPA folks listening to this, they might have, um, strategic processes of doing things. So if this is helpful, like you can write down 30 things that you do in a day, no matter how trivial, and then, you know, just cross off 27 that you don't like to do or not good at. And then you circle three and then here's two sentences of <laughs> there's your superpower. There's your unique ability. Um, that's kind of what, you know, how I started the process. And then you know, talking to visionaries like Dan and then Dr. Peter Diamandis, they've helped tweak it throughout the mm -hmm. years. But yep, yeah, so that's the purpose of my life: superpower, unique ability. Well, I, I I love the idea because um, I I think too many of us as CPAs we we take on clients A that we shouldn't be taking on. No. Don't <laughs> don't fit our superpower. Not me, like, frankly. <laughs> <laughs> and and we we take on and we take on work that we shouldn't be taking on because Why would it doesn't you do that? it doesn't fit. You and I talk about uh, Colby a lot. We actually mm -hmm. use it for all of our clients as well as actually Smart. for and for all of our our staff. But we mm. where I've actually talked to David Colby about this. We're actually one of the mm -hmm. biggest users of Colby in the world, and oh, beca wow. because yeah. of the number of because we have clients and their spouses take Colby every mm -hmm. every time we we. Uh, have a new client come into the network. And, you know, that uh, obviously that's to help identify your superpowers, right? I mean, that to me, that's one Everything. of those assessments that's so good at saying, okay, well, what, what are you good at? I mean, I'm good at simplifying. I'm not good. You don't want me doing your due diligence. I, t I told no. people yesterday, I'm, I'm speaking um, to a group of uh, entrepreneurs and uh, real estate investors. I said, you don't want me doing your tax return. And they'll look <laughs> at me like, what? <laughs> I'm going, no, you wouldn't Bad want me idea. doing your tax. I would be, I, I'm terrible at actually doing the tax. I can do it. I can do it, but Ugh. it's, it's just painful for me. And so literally when I do, I, because I, my wife and my, our taxes are so complicated. I actually do it. Cause I like to actually go through that exercise, mm -hmm. but she has to review it. She's CPA. She has to review it. And she's more of your typical CPA. She's an 8822. Two. Is that her cold? No, she is a, she is. I got to tell you, Justin, she is such a perfect compliment for me. She's what a five, nine, five, two. Wow. I've never heard of that. That's yeah, incredible. She is a, I, I will tell you, she is wow. a, you she is the perfect person I've to go nine, shopping five. with. That's a stabilizing can, human, by the way. Exactly. She can make a decision faster than anybody I've ever known. She goes, I either love it or I don't. Here's the right. color. Here's the here's here's the pattern. I know what I want. This is it. And she doesn't overthink it because she's not that high of a fact finder, but she What's doesn't her print? think it. What is her print? Oh, I don't know that. I don't, I don't know. That'd be interesting. That. That, that would be interesting. But my, my point is, is that, is that, you know, sometimes what we have to do is we, we have to have other people help us identify and other people do things that are their superpowers that right. aren't our superpowers. And that's part of putting that team together. Um, but looking at the clients and again, going back to what clients do we want, right? What do we want right. to be doing? We shouldn't be doing our business shouldn't be about something we don't want to do. I mean, if Why you don't you want do to do that? tax returns, your business shouldn't be about doing tax returns. If you don't want to do consulting, frankly, your business shouldn't be about consulting. You know, no. if all you want to do is tax returns, then fine. Then get, get a job, do tax returns. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, you can make plenty of money being an H&R Block um, uh <laughs> <laughs> franchisee you can i mean the, some fun. of those people make some of those people make uh, millions of dollars a year so you can make money doing 
anything, I think. Um, right. But but finding the right clients. So, mm-hmm. but here's something you 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 like to say is that you think clients like a visionary, not a tactitioner. Tician, can you kind of explain that? What you mean by the that difference and why they want that visionary, and not the tactician? Yeah. So usually people like us are married to stabilizing humans. That's, uh, that's the first thing, but, um, and then we only partner with visionaries who live in abundance and who look at things as investments, not costs. So that's definitely not the traditional CPA. (laughs) It's the entrepreneur who happens to be a CPA. Um, and then what I found is again, if you're not a litmus test for people you serve, then that's hypocrisy. So the purpose of my life is to be a connecting superhero for every visionary, not business owner, not, not CPA visionary uh, who shares their stories with the world, not their world, the fundamental fundamental difference. And so for me, if I'm not partnered with a visionary who wants to change the world or at least the United States or North America, then I get I get very bored. I get very bored. And so all the companies are are just connecting visionaries to other visionaries, either through media or just other other connections. But so there's a fundamental difference between a business owner, and a true visionary entrepreneur. Okay, so again, my brain, all I do is talk to people like you and then turn everything into into patterns. So business owners, they care about revenue, office bla- office space, uh, employee count. That stuff's all fine, but it's it's uh, material things. And they're trying to change their world there, there. Oh, got it. True visionary, true visionary entrepreneur, they care about purpose in life, connectivity, spending time with family and loved ones. They've already changed their world. Now they're changing the world, the fundamental difference. And their world people, they don't understand the world people, and the world people do not want to be introduced to their world people. <laughs> they don't want that at all. Yes, I have found that um, to be <laughs> absolutely true. It's 100% true. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like um, when we were just, just first had the idea for starting this network, I asked uh, a, a, a colleague of mine who's a CPA, partner in a CPA firm, and I said, uh, and I invited him. I said, would you like to join our network? And he goes, why would I want to share what I know with somebody else? Right. <laughs> so going, that's an 8822. Well, I, I, yeah. I, I like, I am I am removing that that Bye. invitation. That, re, that invitation has been retracted immediately. Bye. See you later. <laughs> I, I do not want, I do not want you in our <laughs> network. Um, but, but that... <laughs> <laughs> so that goes to your, your, you know, we talk, I mean, we talk a lot um, about uh, scarcity versus abundance right? and really focused on, well, look, if I can change the world, but we hear a lot, especially among, um, and, and for some reason it's attributed to the younger generations, uh, uh, um, millennials and Gen Zs. Um, I'm not sure it's, I, I don't think it's really limited to them, but it seems to be attributed to them that they want a purpose. They want they 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 they're really looking for purpose and meaning yeah. rather than mm-hmm. just money. Probably because they grew up with money is is my guess. Mm-hmm. Is they they actually grew up with money where you know a lot yes. of people my age, a lot of baby boomers, we didn't you know didn't grow up with money, so right. money was actually important, right? Because that led yes. to some freedom that you wouldn't otherwise have. Um, but they grew up with money, so obviously they're you know on the on the Maslow's hierarchy, they've, they move past that uh, mm. security into that next level where, okay, I want yes. purpose, but, but your, your proposition is that everybody wants that, right? That, that that's actually what a client wants is they want somebody. Why would you not with, want that? With purpose. Why would, so like, um, I appreciate that background from a generational standpoint. And then the question, I am a very logical person. Um, this is being a high, I'm an eight, six, seven, one Colby. So, which is, that's very rare. I don't think you'll ever meet another eight, six, seven, one. Most of my days talking to three, three, nine, three, zero, three, three, nine, four. So, and then simplifying that and, and then adding a high fact finder logic into this. So I only ask myself two questions every single day that actually matter Two two questions. Okay. So one is that I have a good experience that day with my family. I have never met anyone that has had a good family life that has not had a good life. If you know someone that has a good family life, regardless of their visionary wackadoo like us or not, that has not had a good life, I would like to meet that person. 
Um, I haven't met that person yet, but I would like to meet them. And then two is did network grow on a global level? So shows like this build global network conversations, whether they're recorded or not like this, they build global network because then I just connect, connect, connect. So I found all this other stuff uh, takes care of itself. All the business owner stuff takes care of itself. But again, the their world people, the business owner ones, they're not going to understand this conversation because they're still trying to change their world. A logical person uh -huh. who wants to change the world, they why would you not want to have a purpose in life? I mean, that's an illogical thing to not want that. So so do you think that um, people have to change their world before they can go to the world? That's an incredibly good question. That's an incredibly good follow through question on that. So what I have seen, what I have seen is someone is either born like you or me or they're not. I think most people would choose this life, but those four things become become excuses um, mm -hmm. instead of fuel to, you know, speech Not impediment a, becomes your fuel to over to, to build this. Okay. And you speak just fine. I mean, no one would ever know that they would never know that you had that based on this conversation. They just wouldn't, but it's always in your head. It's always there. You brought it up. So <laughs> it's always fuel, no matter how successful it's always, it's always fuel. Mm -hmm. And I just think that entrepreneurs are born differently. But if you are born like that, you can work on your mindset every single day. And the right mindset will attract the right network, which will create endless opportunities for you. Wrong mindset will repel right network and create right or no opportunities will create no opportunities. So I just work on my, I my, my mindset every single day. And so to answer the, the world, their world, um, I'm be curious to see what your take is on this. Uh, my firms have had multiple billionaires, multiple gajillionaires as PR partners. And then I think in almost six years as an entrepreneur, we've had, I think, eight or nine folks that were dirt broke, but they found a way to make an investment to share their story with the world. So when you have visionary abundance investment mindset, I think you can be one of two types of people. Again, visionary abundance investment mindset. One, you're running a high six-figure to 10-figure business. You see your family and friends whenever you want to do what you like to do, what you're great at. Or that that's most of the people I talk to. Or, or you're not one of those people yet, but you will do whatever it takes to become one of those people. So that might be the answer to your question. Well, let me let me let me kind of reach back into my story and kind of give give an example and see. Um, okay. It, I, I just like your take on what happened here. Okay. So um, okay. I started, so I get fired from Price Waterhouse in uh, entrepreneur 19, life, 1990, <laughs> 1994. Um, How old were you? Ooh, 1994, I was 37. How many children did you have by then? Two. Okay. How old were they? Uh, so <laughs> 97, they'd have been like six and 12. And your wife was a stabilizing human working full time with insurance at that time? She was, um, uh, no, she was working part-time and oh, oh, figure was, it out. <laughs> she was working part-time and, um, and actually she, she's wanting to go back to school. So she, she just went back to school. So, uh, and she's, she's, and, 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 and she was bipolar and that, that wife was bipolar. So this was a different that, wife. This is this different. is not my current wife. This is my uh -huh. first wife. My first so wife. Not a stabilizing human. Not at all. Not at all. No, right. no. She, she was actually a three three seven three. That oh, was her Colby score. God. Okay. So, oh. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so so I so I start my CPA firm. I have this idea that I oh. really want to serve entrepreneurs. So I did have the vision from the beginning. I want to place where mm -hmm. people love coming to work. So I, I really I've never changed my two, you know, visions. Uh, about the business. So I, you know, I start going, I, I get clients, all that kind of stuff. And I um, break up with my first partner. This is like four years into it. We, we, we have a, a huge blow up. We, we break up with a partner. <laughs> Entrepreneurly. Um, the uh, half, half of the clients leave and go with the partner. Okay. Uh -huh. All the staff stay. All the staff stay. So you're in all four. That's all. You're <laughs> and, and, and we make the decision. So, so now what I've done is I've taken a manager, uh, the, a young woman who is a manager in my firm. I asked her to be a partner. 
because I like partners. I, I, I find that if I have a partner who oh, is, you need a partner with your I, Colby, I do if you don't have one, that's a disaster. So, so give me, so her Colby score is six, seven, six, two. Perfect. <laughs> no, she, literally, we are the perfect complement. She's uh, still your partner. She is. Yeah, she is. Right. Yep. Still is 21 years later. She's still my partner. Right. Um, <laughs> but, uh, so, but we have to make a decision. And the decision is, do we let half the staff go um, or uh -huh. do we go find some, you know, a CPA firm to buy? Do we go find clients, figure out how to- And you're 41 at this time, bring correct? Clients. And we decide, well, we can't give up these. First of all, I didn't want to lose the staff. I, I like the staff. I've always liked my staff. And, um, and second of all, it's too hard to train staff. It's too hard to find them. So why would I do that? That's the hard part. Finding new clients is the easy part. And so we actually, and, and literally a postcard comes in. Um, so a postcard comes in the mail, says CPA, uh, CPA practices for sale. I call on it. I talk to the owner. The owner says, okay, first thing you need to do is you know need to go out and get this book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad, because mm -hmm. the author is one of our clients. So here's my question. So going back to this scarcity abundance and this whole, you know, what what is it that that causes things? Um, chance? Or is that a result of everything else that had happened up up until that? Point? Oh, oh, oh. That's the question. Good one. Yeah. So I hear blah, 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 blah. Answer, answer. <laughs> so that was good. All right. So you answered your, your question. Thank you. Uh, and the only reason I kept asking questions in the middle of that is because this is being recorded. Otherwise, I would have just sat there and, and listened and started typing. Um, but uh, this is a different format. So one of the chapters in first book is uh, being lucky is part of the process, but you have to put yourself in the position to be lucky. So you've, you know, you've just put yourself in the position to be lucky. The other thing is with your Colby uh, and print, you're an eight, three print. Most of the true visionaries that I talk to uh, the top level folks and strategic coach, they're eight, three, I'm an eight, three print. Uh, for those that don't know what that means, it's your unconscious motivators so a traditional CPA would be like a one five print. That's everything uh, needs to be perfect and right and uh, to be knowledgeable and smart. That's not an entrepreneur. So eight, three print is uh, uh, to be strong and self-reliant and uh, three is to succeed and achieve. So that's what you and I are. So unconsciously, we're motivated by that. So unconsciously, um, that created uh, you to be in the right position to have all these things, all these things great happen that have happened to you. That's that's the way I see it. And again, with your Colby being um, a nine quick start, ten is the highest. You might you might be a ten now. Um, you've been through enough trauma where you might be a ten. That uh, high quick start means you're not afraid to risk things. You're not afraid to risk. Um, so I've, I've stopped talking to lower quick starts because they talk about something and they never actually do it in almost six <laughs> years as an entrepreneur. My firm's a partner with one person under a seven quick start that I know of one. So I just stopped talking to them. That's interesting. I would love to know the, if I don't even know if you could do it, but the average Colby of the people listening to this, not the average Colby of a, a regular CPA. Right. Probably right. Like a seven, seven, no, two. I actually, while you're talking, I'm literally taking this note. I, I, if I could turn my camera, I'd show you. And, right. and, and, it's, and it is, we need to do Colby and print for all of our members. And that would be, 100%. That'd be a microcosm. That'd be a microcosm of the people listening, right? Because that's where they came from, right? They came from people who heard me, people who read Tax-Free Wealth um, mm -hmm. uh, or, or their clients read Tax-Free Wealth. And they go, wow, this is, th this is interesting. This is a whole different way to think. I'm interested. I want to do they this. Would I want to be think differently. If they're not at least, uh, the overwhelming majority, if they're not at least seven quick starts, I would be shocked. I'd be shocked. I, I'd and be what interested I, because we, well, we actually do have some that, that are not high quick So here's starts. why. This is what I've seen with that. Because my firm partners with a lot of entrepreneurs that happen to be in the financial space. Uh -huh. And again, talk to me is meaning. It's meaningless. It's meaningless with that. So I had talked to a lot of folks in that space that they had taken the Colby 10 years ago and they were maybe a four or five quick start because they were surrounded by human CPAs. So they had to, they thought they had to be a human CPA, even though they're not. Um they're not. Um, and then they retook it in their who they actually were, and they were seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, starts. interesting. Yeah. 
Interesting. Interesting. Um, so um, if you would kind of give us, a, if you can just give us a, a few, two or three ideas, if, uh, you know, CPA is listening to this, they're going, wow, this is really interesting stuff. What are the next steps? You know, if you're going to, you know, you, you want to know your story, you want to know who you, the, the right clients are, you want to know how to tell that story, you, you want to, because you're trying to figure out how do I distinguish myself, right? I mean, this is one of the things that has been a really fun, frankly, for me, is that we've literally, um, WealthAbility has been in business for five years, and yet we are a known brand. And, right. you know, so it's, that's, uh, that's not a long time. You know, we have a lot of people listening right. that have been in business for a lot longer than that. Nobody knows who they are other than their clients. Right. So, so what is it that we can do? What kind of, cause I do like practical. I'm a very practical person. What yeah. practical things can we do? Two or three steps we could take really to kind of, to kind of, kind of either change our mindset or turn to that idea of, wow, here's the story. Here's what I need to tell. Here's how I need to tell it. What are some things people can do? Well, I mean, anyone who would try to do this themselves that has no background in that, that's not going to, I mean, that would be like, so I, I, hey, don't do it yourself. Why would you, why would I do my own tax returns? My, I mean, that would be, I can, I'm a one implementer. If I tried to build anything, I'd have a nervous breakdown. I mean, I don't know why you would, I mean, but no. So like, like the story you just said, if, if there was a, if there was a, I don't know, a word count on what you described, that would have been probably 2,000, 2,500 words. So my brain is blah, 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 and distills it to 500 words. And then here's your story. And then intro, 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 result, result. I mean, so all I hear is we're tired of being best secret. We want to be in more news media. It's usually at a global level, but many times national, regional to create more validity and credibility. So, and then we just partner with visionaries that don't ask, what do you cost or charge? Because otherwise that it, it goes horribly wrong very quickly, but, but no, I mean, again, media only cares about two things. One is a good story. What you've overcome in life, what inspires you. And then two is a news peg. A news peg is why is it a story now? A book coming out, a new platform. I don't know that, that, but that's a minor part of the story, but no one in their right mind would ever try to do that themselves. I mean, that would, they're not trained in that in any, I mean, I'm not trained in anything Besides doing this and then spending time with my family, I, I'm useless to society. Besides this, <laughs> I love it. I am. <laughs> I love it. 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 Yes. No. I know that feeling. There are certain things that I go, "Yep, you want me doing this," but there's like nine thousand other things that you do not want me doing. This don't 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 have me don't don't let me do your tax return. Don't do the tax return. So there's don't, a um. Don't let me do I, that. I was talking to my, um, so my dad was 61 when I was born, 61. And then uh, he died when I was 13. And then his brother, um, he lit, his name was Stan, my dad's brother. Um, and he lived to just past when I married my wife, Sarah. And so I called him because he had been married for 70 years approximately. Wow. And so I asked him my wedding day, I go, what two things, what, what advice do you have? Uh, he was too sick to come up to the wedding, but I, I called him. So he said two things, two things. One, always put your wife, my, my wife's, uh, Sarah, uh, her needs before yours, because that's one. And then two, he said, never touch the thermostat. Never touch the thermostat. <laughs> so anything that is not in my zone of genius is the thermostat, and I don't touch it. So anyone who would try to do something that's not in their, you know, don't touch the thermostat. Don't, don't do the tax return. Don't do it <laughs> unless it's your own. <laughs> if you want to do it, great. But no, don't, don't touch the thermostat. So final question for you, Justin, how do you, how do you get your story to reach the type of clients that you're looking for? So how do you get your story to the right people? That's a very good, as you said, practical question. So been a journalist my whole life. Um, have seen this from a firsthand and partnership perspective because I'm constantly in media myself and obviously partners are constantly in media, okay? And I'm not talking to humans right now. I'm talking to visionaries. So shows like these have actually replaced, uh, you know, TV, radio, newspapers, et cetera, 
for three main reasons, uh, because my brain turns everything into patterns. So here are the three reasons. And you are literally a litmus test for all of this, but you will see shortly. So one, the host is usually an entrepreneur, not a journalist. So it's someone like you. Someone like you will ask questions that a journalist who's a journalist would never ask. They wouldn't think of it. They don't live in abundance. They live in scarcity. Scarcity. Okay, so that's one. Two, you can do a deep dive on someone 35, you know, 30, 45 minutes, an hour. So you actually get to know the person and the host. I think we've actually learned more about you today than me, which I <laughs> actually like that. I actually prefer that. I'd rather listen than talk. And then <laughs> and then three, <laughs> three, the audience might not be as large quantity wise, but it's far more qualified. Definitely regular humans have turned off, <laughs> turned this off by now, but a visionary like us will will listen to this. So to simplify that simplification, shows like these are transformational platforms for entrepreneurs. That's what they that's what we are. So and then I'm a litmus test with people I serve. So I'm constantly media and then partners are constantly media. Hosts want to interview me first, then they want to interview partners because I only partner with people like this. Otherwise I get very bored. Awesome. Well thank you. So so Justin bring so uh Justin, where do we find more about Justin? Sure. Um, the main site is uh, brepicllc.com, B-R-E-P-I-C-L-L-C.com. The only reason I mention that is there's a, uh, it's through Strategic Coach Platform, there's a mindset scorecard and people love taking it. It takes oh, five like minutes. That. Oh, you, I can send you the link. You would, you would like it. Yeah, I would love that. And feel free to incorporate it into Thank your, because, you. and it's through the coach platform. They keep track of everything. So then just tweak that. Someone um, in financial space sent me theirs and they're like, oh, I'll just have you tweak it. So I'll, I'll send you that. Um, oh, and then people you. like taking it because they, they qualify or, quali or disqualify themselves with their own mindset. Interesting. I love it. I love it. All right. Well, this has been terrific, Justin. Thank you so much. Um, I, I've, I, I'm going to right now put a little plug for strategic coach because I had never met Justin and been for strategic, strategic right. coach. And I actually met Justin because I read a strategic coach book called who not how, and it, it, it just hit me that my whole every all my problems can be solved with a who, and none of them can be solved by me figuring out how no, um, no. <laughs> it's come. <laughs> so, so that is that, that, that's a book that I think Justin, and I would both recommend yes. uh, strategic coach has been great um, for me. And I know Justin spends way more time at strategic coach than I do. So I'm, mm. I'm just, I'm a newbie and Justin is an old hat, a strategic coach, but really appreciate it. Justin, remember that, you know, as Justin said at the very beginning, people care about who you are before they'll care about what you do. And we need to understand who we are ourselves, that sometimes in order to do that, we need other people. For me, it started with Robert Kiyosaki, frankly, is that I went through a lot of training with Robert. Robert is known for financial education, but his best education for me has actually been personal development. Uh, education. I, I've, I've right. learned more from a personal development standpoint. He actually did, uh, Justin, he actually did a makeover for me one time in, in a, in a, uh, in a seminar, did a full makeover. I mean, a, a real makeover, clothes, hair, everything. And hmm. it actually changed my world. It changed my world to do that makeover. Uh, another story for another day. But remember that when we get this mindset, when we start saying, well, wait a minute, I do have a story. My story is important and it's going to be important to a certain group of people. And that's the group of people you want yes. for your client. And when we get the right clients, that's why we say we're always, we always want to have better clients, better clients produce a better practice and a better yes. practice produces a better life. Thanks, Justin. We'll see y'all next time. Good one, man. Love it. You've been listening to the Wealth Ability for CPA show. Better clients, better practice, better life. To learn more, go to wealthability.com.